finally, after a long offseason of hype and talk, the game is finally here. Florida State taking on Alabama in the Chick-fil-A kickoff. Welcome to the Knoll Insiders game preview delivered by UPS. I'm Lane Hurt, along with Tim Lenefeld. Tim, there's been a lot of talk about this one. They've called it the GOAT, the greatest opener of all time, number one versus number three. We can finally play this football game. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about it the other day when you, when you hear sort of hyperbole like that, the, the greatest opener of all time, I think, well, well certainly there was a great, greater <laughs> opener at some point in the last hundred years or so of college football. But numerically speaking, in terms of rankings, uh, it really is. It's the first time that the AP's number one and number three teams have met in a season opening game since they started the preseason poll way back in 1950. We've had three instances of number one playing number four, never number one versus number three, and obviously never number one versus number two. So this really is it. In terms in terms of preseason rankings, uh, this is the best it's ever been. I, I think fans are pretty familiar with the Crimson Tide, but let's talk a little bit about Alabama. They are the 2016 national runner-up, the 2015 national champions, ranked number one to start this season. To end last season, they were number one in scoring defense, giving up less than 12 points a game. Not shabby in offense as well. Number 16 in scoring offense, scoring nearly 39 points per game. Tim, obviously, Alabama, the toughest task that Florida State has had to open a season. What is it about this Alabama team that sticks out to you the most? Well, I mean, we talk about really the, the standard in college football since 2007 when Nick Saban took over at Alabama. I mean, it, it is this program. They're, they're the, I think, the undisputed class of college football. Even when they don't win national championships, they're right there in the mix. Multiple Heisman Trophy winners, outstanding players on defense. I think they're you know, obviously known for that as well. And then it starts at the top with Nick Saban, who I think uh, at this point has established himself as one of, if not the greatest college football coaches of all time, what he's been able to do at Alabama. And, and, and don't forget, Alabama wasn't exactly in a great place when he took over. It required some rebuilding and renovating. So uh, what he's been able to do to turn that program around, make it the class of college football, uh, it really is impressive. But it's also an exciting opportunity for Florida State. You know, we, we look at, and you hear that number a lot, the, the two winningest programs since Jimbo Fisher took over at Florida State in 2010 are number one, Alabama, number two, Florida State. So by, by that standard, by that measure, these are the, the, the two best programs in college football since both of them, both Jimbo Fisher and Nick Saban, have been head coaches. So it's a matchup everybody's wanted to see for, for several years, and now it's finally here. Well, let's start with Florida State's offense going against Alabama's defense. Alabama returned six starters on that defense, four in the secondary led by Minka Fitzpatrick. Florida State brings a lot back offensively as well. Obviously, no Dalvin Cook, but you get DeAndre Francois back, who looks to be a, a guy who's ready to take that next step as quarterback of Florida State. Absolutely, and, and I think he's going to have to. Look, this might be the toughest defense that DeAndre Francois faces all year. There's not going to be any easing into the season for him or really anybody else on that offense when you go up against that Alabama defense. Uh, I've been really impressed watching things with DeAndre this fall and fall camp that they don't really show up on the stat sheet. They might not show up on the stat sheet, but the way that he carries himself, the way that he is poised and in control, the way that he just looks so sure of himself when he makes his throws, is stuff that I don't know that we necessarily saw from him, at least at this point a year ago when he was a redshirt freshman and in a lot of ways is still trying to win that quarterback job. This year he's got the confidence from knowing that he's had a year under his belt. He knows that he's the undisputed starter at, at the quarterback position. He just feels like a guy who has taken some big steps uh, you know, between the ears and, and seems so much more calm, more sure of himself, obviously knows the playbook a little bit better. Uh, so to me, that's a really big deal for Florida State to have that natural progression. Don't forget, this is the first time that Florida State's even had a returning starter at quarterback since 2014. That was Jameis Winston. So to have that continuity at the position, I think, can really you know, pay big dividends for Florida State. You can talk a lot of things when you're talking about this matchup, but you have to look at the offensive line and what they're going to be able to do. I and mean, we'll have a several key matchups. Our first one that we'll look at is Deron Payne versus Alec Everly inside. And, of course, you have Deshaun Hand versus Derek Kelly, who's slotted to, to be the starting left tackle for the Nulls. Those guys are going to be a handful, but other than that, that's a young, I guess, inexperienced for, for Alabama in, in that front seven. It really is. They lost a lot of guys uh, to the NFL draft, but the thing about Alabama, if you follow recruiting and recruiting rankings, you know that, that those guys recruit at a high level every year. But if you're looking for reasons for optimism, and I think there are some, this is going to be the first game for some of those guys too, or at least first games in, in new roles or expanded roles. So while Florida State has a, a revamped offensive line and there are some, some fresh faces or some guys in some different places, that's kind of the case 
case for Alabama as well. So, like you said, to me, it comes down to to those two Alabama Alabama defensive linemen and, and the like, I guess the the left side of Florida State's line. If Derek Kelly lines up at left tackle like we expect him to, Alec Everly back and, and feeling good after hip surgery. Uh, if those guys can perform up to the level that we've heard over the last few weeks, uh, that's a really big deal for Florida State. Uh, if they struggle and and look, there's those guys at Alabama are really good. They're going to win some plays here and there. Uh, can Florida State counterbalance that? Can uh, Jacquez Patrick? Uh, can, can he make a guy miss to get to, you know, break through the line of scrimmage and get some yardage? Can DeAndre Francois make a pass rusher miss by himself some time and find a guy down the field? Those are the little things on a play-to-play -play basis that I think could swing the game. Yeah, I think a lot of people want to forget. I mean, Alabama has the number one scoring defense. Michigan had the number two scoring defense last year. Florida State found ways to, to score points and, and put up over 30 against a really good Michigan team. Absolutely. And I think, again, yeah, that goes back to the, the first game of the season thing. I think it makes you nervous if you're a fan of Florida State, but it also should make you nervous if you're a fan of Alabama. There's just so many unknowns and, and so many players who we all expect to do great things, high school All-Americans, that sort of thing. But until you see them do it, or until they've actually had to do it, especially, I mean, gosh, what a scenario this is playing uh, in that stadium <laughs> under those lights, this stage. I mean, man, talk about a, you know, a separator between guys who are ready and guys aren't. You're going to find out really quickly. Uh, on the other side, you have Florida State's defense versus Alabama's offense. Florida State, I think we see what this defense could potentially be this year, one, one of the best, if not the best in the country. Alabama known for its defense, but some awfully good offensive pieces. Jalen Hurts at quarterback, coming back for his second year as a starter. Bo Scarborough, Alabama seems to have a great running back every single year. And then you have Calvin Ridley on the outside. Certainly some weapons for Hurts. What are the keys, what are the matchups you see that are important here? I feel like every year Florida State fans wonder, how are we going to defend mobile quarterbacks, guys who can run, guys who can make things happen from broken plays. Well, you're going to find out pretty quick because that is Jalen Hurts. He's a fantastic runner who can also throw. So, you know, you're going to see, is Florida State able to stay disciplined, stay in those gaps, stay on assignment like everybody says. You know, we heard Josh Sweat talk the other day about not farming somebody else's land, which I think is one of Brad Long's favorite phrases. You know, yeah, which, is, which basically that means, you know what your job is, do it, and everybody will be fine. Well, we're going to find out just how, uh, how well that message has been received because Jalen Hurts can really hurt you with his legs. And, and what happens there is if he breaks off a few runs, then you know you got to start committing and, and being afraid of, of, or not afraid, but you know planning on him running, and that creeps guys up a little bit or, or maybe has guys lose track of their assignment. And now, all of a sudden, the throws that were difficult in the first quarter become a little bit more easy because the defense is how to shift its focus. They got to stay, stay contained on Jalen Hurts, keep him inside. Like, it's the same kind of thing. He's a good athlete and a good player. He's going to make some plays, but you guys still remember to keep things in front of you uh, and try to limit that as best you can and, and mind your P's and Q's, so to speak, because when you get out of position or you, you lose sight of, of your focus and, and what you're supposed to be doing, that's when Alabama can really hurt you. You know, Roll out, find Calvin Ridley down the field, and all of a sudden uh, a big play is, is, is coming and, and you know, you're, you're sort of against the ropes. It's funny you mentioned Ridley because that leads us to our other key matchup is Tavares McFadden versus Calvin Ridley. Because like you said, if the goal is to keep Hurts in the pocket and make him a pocket passer, make him beat you with his arm, well, the guy he's going to want to do that with is Calvin Ridley, who seems like Alabama, you know, from Julio Jones to Amari Cooper, now it's Ridley's turn as the star wide receiver. McFadden, this is his opportunity. He was one of the best in the nation last year in intercepting passes. This is his opportunity to prove that that he can be that top guy. Oh, and it's going to be exciting, right? I mean, you talk about two All-American candidates, two guys who are probably going to be playing on Sunday sooner rather than later. Just watching those two go, you know, head to head, it reminds me a little bit of, of Terrell Buckley and Desmond Howard so many years ago when FSU went to Michigan. Just two big-time players going up against each other. If you're a college football fan, you got to eat it up. But for Florida State, if if Tavares is able to hang with with Ridley one on one on a play to play basis, he'll have some safety help here and there. But if he can handle Calvin Ridley mostly by himself. Uh, that would be a huge deal for Florida State in terms of what they can do in the rest of the defense. If you, you can, and again, I feel like we're going to say this with every matchup. Really, is a great player, and he's going to make plays. And also, I don't think we suspect that, that Tavares McFadden is going to be on him every single play. But if he can win the majority of those matchups, or just a little bit more than his fair share of those matchups, I think that bodes well for Florida State because what it allows you to focus on with your other ten guys. Well, before we wrap things up, we have to talk a little bit about Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher in this matchup. I mean, Coach Fisher, he was under Saban at LSU. Obviously, I mean, these two guys going against each other, two of the best coaches 
in college football right now. Nick Saban in these opening games. 10 and 0 at Alabama. And we're not talking about beating poor teams either. He has wins against Clemson, Virginia Tech, Michigan, Wisconsin, USC. He's also 10 and 0 against former assistants. Jimbo Fisher, not a slouch either. 7 and 0 in openers at Florida State. A couple of big games as well against Pitt, Oklahoma State. Last year against Ole Miss. And this, and this is a fun matchup against two guys who are at the top of their of, of what they do. And, and don't forget, you know, you, two of the, the preeminent offensive and defensive minds and Jimbo Fisher considered maybe probably the most respected developer of quarterbacks in college football, putting guys in the NFL right and left, and then Nick Saban as the mastermind of Alabama's defense. Watching those two match wits, seeing how much, if at all, their history together and their knowledge of each other, what they like to do, their tendencies, how much is that going to play a role, if at all? Will, will the other one, you know, sort of play the game of, well, this is what he thinks I'm going to do, so I'm going to do something different, and then it says, well, he thinks that I think that he's, you know what I mean? You, you kind of get into that sort of like, you know, like a James Bond movie or something like that. I don't know. But, but you know, see that, that cat and mouse game, the chess game, uh, I, I'm really excited to see how that shakes out. Uh, you mentioned Alabama, Nick Saban, 10-0 in, in season openers, and that's fantastic. And, and really, I think Alabama deserves credit. there. They've been sort of on the forefront of playing these high-profile yeah. games at the beginning of seasons, and it's really taken college football by storm. Florida State has joined that wave as well, and it's it's great for for the fans. And so uh, I think that's a really cool thing, and it's glad to, you know glad to see the, the the two teams that have really embraced this uh, getting together. But look. Those programs that you mentioned, Clemson, Wisconsin, USC, they're, they're all fantastic and they've all done great things, but I don't think that any of those teams that Alabama played in those years, so those specific versions mm -hmm. of those teams, match up with what Florida State is capable of. This is a really good FSU team, as always, loaded with NFL talent. I think this is going to be the biggest test in a season opener of Nick Saban's Alabama career. Now, the opposite is also true, right? I think this is by far the biggest test of Jimbo Fisher's opening career at Florida State as well. So uh, something has to give, so to speak. Oh, and then on a similar note, you mentioned that the 10-0 against assistance. I don't mean anything uh, against some of the guys who are on that list. Don't I, get yourself in no, trouble no, right I, here, I Tim. Never, I would never. But it, I, I looked it up. The, uh, the, the list is Derek Dooley, Will Muschamp, uh, Jim McElwain down at Florida now, and Mark D'Antonio at, at Mississippi State. Uh, I like Jimbo Fisher's chances against just about all those guys, uh, if not most of them. Mark D'Antonio has obviously done great things at Michigan State. But the point being, I think that Jimbo Fisher represents the biggest challenge of former assistants for Nick Saban as well. So when you hear those numbers, they're kind of cool, but I don't know how much they actually mean come Saturday. I, I agree with, with all that, Tim. And I mean, this is what a way to open the college football season. I'm excited right now. I've been excited for a while. Fans have been excited since this matchup was announced. Yeah. I, what do you expect from the atmosphere? Uh, it's going to be unbelievable, right? And then the Mercedes Benz Stadium, we were up there, uh, I guess, in January watching Florida State play Georgia Tech in men's basketball and decided to take a little trip over there. And at the time, you're thinking, man, they, uh, they got some work to do. <laughs> but, the, uh, but the work is done. You've seen some of the pictures come out of it, uh, and it just looks unbelievable. The video board is the biggest in, in the country, uh, wraps around the entire stadium. So I know the, the cliche is not a bad seat in the house, but, uh, but I don't think there's going to be a bad seat in the house. And then when you talk about two really big, passionate fan bases who are also in really close proximity to Atlanta, I think obviously the place is going to be jam-packed. I expect it to be, uh, if not a 50-50 split between Alabama and Florida State fans, probably pretty close. Uh, and then, you know, the city of Atlanta, which already has a number of Florida State and Alabama fans just living there anyway or living in proximity. I mean, it's going to be swarming with college football fans. Uh, I mean, I really do feel it's, it's going to have the feel of a national championship game or a playoff game, and it's the kind that you like between two heavyweight, blue-blooded programs, lots of history, lots of tradition, and teams that don't get together all that often. And this is only the fifth time that Florida State will have met Alabama, so uh, it really should be special. There you have it. The time for talk is nearly over as Florida State takes on Alabama in the Chick-fil-A kickoff, number one versus number three. We'll have plenty of content for you. Make sure you check out Tim's first and 10 that'll be up later today on friday and of course we'll have your three keys to victory at mercedes-benz stadium hopefully we hope to get in there shoot that there give you a, a quick look at the stadium beforehand as florida state takes on alabama in prime time this has been your null insiders game preview delivered by ups for tim i'm lane let's finally play some football go Knowles.